Realme GT Neo 3. Ito na siya. Guys, nakita nyo na ito, no? Before. Saan? Sa anong video? Saan banda? Hindi nyo ba naalala? Ito, si Realme GT Neo Naruto Edition. Ito yung non-Naruto Edition. Ito yung official. Di ba sinabi sa inyo, mag-comment kayo down below para malam ni Realme kung interested talaga kayo sa phone na ito. Ganun kakalakas kay Realme? Yeah, that's right. Ay, sabi niya. Uy, ang dami pala may gusto. Let's take it to the Philippines. <laughs> Pero yes, hindi ko masyado na-review yung phone nung time na yun kasi nga, puros pang Naruto lang yung gusto makita ng mga audience ko nun. Naruto yung box, Naruto accessories, Naruto looking phone, and that's pretty much it. Siyempre, hindi mo siya mabibili. Bakit ko pa siya i-review nang extensively, di ba? But for those who are interested in the Realme GT Neo 3 itself, here it is. Meron siyang pinakabagong Dimensity 8100 5G processor and meron siyang dedicated display processor nakasama. Ano kaya yun? 80W Super Dart Charger. Ang bilis. Kasi book si Oppo. Ito naman Dart. Alam naman yung powerful na character ba? Dart Vidar. But probably what sets this apart from other mid-range phones is that flagship Sony IMX766 OIS camera. Bro, alam mo yan. Basura ang mga camera sa mid-range level. Puro specs lang sila. Puro bilis lang daw. Kung gusto mo talaga ng malupit na camera, dapat meron ganun. Sony IMX766 OIS. Kaya siya nagbamala konti, no? I'm so excited kasi ito yung parang flagship level ni Realme. Yung GT series. Realme GT Neo. Ito yung top spec phone nila. Pinakamabilis, pinakamaganda yung camera. Kung isa kang Realme fan, this is your dream phone. And I'm about to unbox it right now. Let's check it out. What's it, Bins? At ako si Cleo. And you're watching Unbox Diaries. Woohoo! Oh, by the way, if you want to check out the full specs of this phone, punta lang sa unboxdiaries.com. We've got it all for you. Ganda ng box. Sobrang social. Sobrang pang flagship. Ang specs sa likod. Napakalaki. Napakaklaro. Hindi ko tulad sa regular na mga mid-range phones nila, no? Parang ang ng text. Ito, talagang social. And they're selling this right now in the Philippines. By the way, ang color ko dito is yung white. Sprint white. Uy, 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of internal storage na siya agay. 5G! Hey! Welcome to the Realme family! Ito na! Quick start guide, mahabang papel po ang kasama. Together! With the safety guide. Yun lang naman ng small box. And here's the phone itself. As you can see. Nice. Uy. Ang pogi ko. Uh, Kapal na mukha mo. Uh, para siyang race car guys. It looks like a muscle car. Kaya pala. Fast and the furious. Hindi uh, hindi mo. Okay here we go. Underneath. We get all these accessories. Smoked jelly case. Pinausukan na jelly case. Ay, di ba bango yan, sir? It smells like fire. Binarbik ito, no? Bago to nilagay sa box. The 80 watt fast charger. 80 watts max super dark charger. And of course, yung kanyang USB Type-C cable. And finally, meron pa siyang secret compartment for the SIM ejector pin. And that's pretty much it. Realme. Dare to leap. Kasi matindi din leap niya from its mid-range devices. Malaking leap po to guys. In terms of specs, in terms of looks, well at least yung looks ay kamukha niya si Realme 9 Pro, mga ganon, Realme 9. It still has that Realme vibes to it. Mukha parang siyang Realme device. From the curves, yung camera, Realme na Realme. Meron siyang dalawang Mustang lines dun sa kanyang camera part hanggang sa ilalim. Ang kanyang camera sensor napakalaki, as you can see. I'm excited to show you guys kasi nga nakita ko na yung camera nito. Sobrang kanda, sobrang sharp. 50 megapixels. Sony IMX766 OIS sensor ang inilagay dito. Meron pa siyang 8MP ultra and 2MP macro lens. Meron siyang dalawang flash sa gitna. And that is the camera module. Yung likod niya is made out of glass. That's nice. Ang sarap ka na feeling eh. Very premium compared sa mga Realme 9 Pro nila. Kaya lang sa side ay made out of plastic. Which is okay kasi nga mas magaan siya kapag plastic yung body. Okay na ako sa glass bag. Pwede na yan. Speaking of the body, it's all pretty much black. So, black sa sides, white sa likod, pretty nice. Ito yung kanyang power button, volume rocker na sa left side, merong microphone sa taas, ano to speaker? Speaker ba yan? Yung speaker na sa ilalim, USB Type-C port, isa pang microphone, at yung kanyang SIM tray na dual nano SIM card slot lang. Alam nyo na yan guys, kapag flagship level, wala na siyang extra micro SD card slot. It is a flagship feature daw. But the good news is, 256 gigs na itong variant na to kapag binili mo na siya. So, malaki na yun. 
For some, that's actually very big. At 8 gigs of RAM na siya. Nice. Now, dito ako nabigla. Sa kanyang display. 6.7 inch, 1080p, 120Hz AMOLED display. But not just any AMOLED display. Ito po ay super high quality. Feeling ko, flagship yung kanyang display. And the mention dito sa box, no? Meron doon siya sa sarili niyang display processor. Which is kaya pala sobrang ganda ng kanyang visuals dito. Actually, nag-play ako ng 4K HDR video as you can see. Ang tindi. This, my friends, is a flagship level display. Pakita ko lang ah, difference niya sa iPhone ko. Actually, kinumpare ko siya sa iPhone 13 Pro Max ko. At nagulat ako sa results. Ito na po. As you can see, ma sharp si Realme GT Neo 3. That was surprising. Siyempre, isipin mo, 70k itong iPhone 13 Pro Max ko. Pero, as you can see, ma sharp Wala, well, hindi siya ganun ka big of a difference. Pero, as you can see right here, ma sharp ang picture quality ni Realme GT Neo 3. Ay natin may ulo ng aso. Hindi ako makapaniwala na ma sharp pa yung 30k phone kaysa sa 70k phone. Pares po yung OLED display. Napansin ko rin sa Netflix, no? Mas sharp talaga siya tingnan. Hindi ko mapaniwala dito. Sobrang grabe naman to. Feeling ko ito yung sinasabi nilang dedicated display processor ni Realme. Ngayon na tanong, bakit meron dedicated processor pa yung mga display? Ano bang meron dyan? Pati nga mga camera eh, may dedicated processor din sila. Well, picture this. Yung processor na isang phone, siya lahat yung nagkatrabaho para sa lahat. The display, the graphics, the processing power, and even the camera image quality siya rin yung bahala doon. Kapag meron kang dedicated processor for a display, a camera, mas maganda yung results kasi hindi siya ganun kahirap. No? Hindi, siya, hindi niya sinasabay-sabay lahat. To put it simply, mas dedicated yung kanyang trabaho sa pagpapaganda, sa pagmamanage, sa pagpaprocess ng display compared sa traditional na processor. And that's why we are getting a better result on this phone compared sa iPhone. Which is sobrang nakakagulat. I was thinking the iPhone display was the best in the business, pero minali ako ni Realme ngayon. iPhone 13 Pro Max yun, sir, no? Yes, iPhone 13 Pro Max. Soon to be iPhone 14 Pro Max. Ye X ko na siya. <laughs> Alam nyo ba, kay Samsung din yung display ni iPhone? Uy, chika, yan ah. Guys, Samsung OLED displays pa rin yung pinibili ni Apple. Yung inilalagay ko nila sa mga latest nilang iPhones. Laging inaasar ni Samsung si Apple, eh. Sobrang inaasar ngayon. Oh, by the way, speak of the display, Malaking yung display niya, 6.7 inch. Yung bezels, very thin, but not the thinnest I've seen. Pahaba siya, and meron siyang punch hole sa gitna. Contrary to other Realme phones na yung kanyang punch hole ay nasa upper left corner, ito na sa gitna guys. So, kapag naglalaro ng games, hindi niya matatakpan yung kanyang punch hole. And yes, very smooth siya. 120Hz refresh rate. Sobrang legit ang kanyang pagka-smooth. Let me just check this out. Ah, hindi. Kasi yung smooth naman niya si iPhone. <laughs> Kala mas smooth pa siya eh. Now, although it does have the muzzle, the bright display. Ibang relasyon ko kay iPhone. Alam mo yun, meron kang bagong babae. Sexy. Ang sarap ng katawan. Gusto mo siya? Kaya lang, here comes your ex. Yung ex na nakakala ng birthday mo. Yung ex mong makapal yung kilay pero nalala mo yung masarap ng luto. Yung ex mong lagi mong chinacharge. Nilulubat gabi-gabi. Joke lang. By the way, kanyang palang punch hole pala ay 16 megapixels. Ah, uh, segue. Now, I'm pretty sure na excited kayo makita yung kanyang Antutu Benchmark Score. Gano'n pa kabilis si Dimensity 8100. Ito pa yung processor na hindi umiinit based dun sa aming testing sa Poco X4 GT. That's right, guys. Hindi umiinit yung processor ni Dimensity 8100. And when it comes to speed, napakabilis po niyan. Wala na pong problema yan sa pag-open ng apps. Walang problema yan sa mga pag-render ng videos, paglaro ng mga latest na graphically intensive games. 800,000 points in Antutu Benchmark Score is above and beyond. Ito po ay Snapdragon 888 level. Snapdragon 888 na hindi mainit. Ayun lang yun. Don't believe me? Check out my Poco X4 GT video. Ayun lang. No, ang biggest problem talaga ng mga mabilis na phone ay kapag hindi sila optimized sa mga games. Like for example, si Mobile Legends wala pa siyang ultra graphics. Naka high graphics lang. And hindi pa niya na-utilize yung super refresh rate at ultra refresh rate. High refresh rate lang siya. So, even though meron kang 120Hz refresh rate, you won't be able to use it on your favorite game. Eh no, up to date to. Baka bash nyo ako ah. Pero yun, naglaro naman ng Mobile Legends dito. Okay naman siya, no? 60 frames per second the last. Pero high graphics naman ako mo dito. Huwag ka magdala. You will not get any frame drops here in Mobile Legends kahit mainit. Natry ko na. This is going to be a very, very reliable Mobile Legends experience. Pero check this out. Sa kanyang Call of Duty settings, magulot ako. Kasi meron siyang very high graphics, max frame rates. 
Optimized. Optimized siya. Pero kasi feeling ko talaga, bakit din hindi pa nilalabas yung mga 90Hz refresh rate sa Call of Duty? Last year, rampant yun sa, sa mga gaming phone. Meron na yun eh. Ngayon, wala po siya guys. Uh, up to 60 frames per second pa nito. So, meaning, you're still not gonna be able to use all the 120Hz refresh rate power. And feeling ko kaya naman niya. Kaya ang kaya ng Dimensity 8100 yan. But of course, the graphics is going to be looking good here. Actually, that's sobrang ganda ng display niya. Mayroon pa siyang dedicated display processor combined with a very powerful graphics and CPU processor. Tapos na. Pang PC ang graphics. Sobrang ganda ng experience kung naga. Kung Call of Duty ka, matutuwa ka talito ng sobra. Experience Call of Duty like you've never before. Yung uh, sounds niya sakto lang. It's not gonna be iPhone level of the gundong. Iba pa rin yung base ni iPhone. Talagang mas pulido yun. And of course, sa Genshin Impact, nako, pwede ka mag-max settings dito. No problem. Pero of course, nag-warm na siya dito. Guys, this is a very graphically intensive game. Although, hindi siya ganun ka-init. Hindi 50 degrees, 48, 47. Nasa 44 degrees lang itong madalas, guys. A warm experience for the max settings. Kung ayaw mo talaga na init, medium graphics lang ang ilagay mo. Kaya lang, Bins, parang mag-Poco X4 GT na lang ako. Kasi, magkano lang ba si Poco X4 GT? 18? 19,000? Eto, 29,000 pesos. Ano ang magiging dahilan kung bakit mo bibilin to? Well, if gamer ka talaga, kung wala kang pakalam sa camera, mag Poco X4 GT ka na. Huwag ka na mag-isip pa. Pero, if you're really into camera, now that's something worth paying for. Kasi guys, lahat po ng mga mid-range, kahit ano po yan, kahit sabihin nilang 108 MP yan, basura po ang camera, wala silang flagship sensor. Si Sony IMX766 sensor ay flagship yan guys. Also found on the Oppo Find X5 Pro. Imposible na makahanap ka na isang ganyan sa isang mid-range phone. Ito, pakita ko na sa inyo kung bakit. So yun, kung makakano ng mga pictures, gamit yung kanyang camera. And although 50 megapixel lang siya, contrary sa mga 64MP, 108MP, the results were stunning. Yung sharpness niya rivals that of the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Uh, pang flagship po talaga yung kanyang level ng camera dito. So, ibig sabihin, parang mas okay na bumili na lang ng ganito kaysa isang flagship phone ni Oppo, ni Huawei, ni Apple, ni Samsung. Para ito lang sapat na. Although, syempre, you're gonna pay more for the telephoto lens ng isang flagship phone. But if you don't need the telephoto lens, if you don't need 120 times zoom, yung mga ganun, kailangan mo ba yun? Parang hindi, kasi pangat pa rin yung quality. Ba't ka na mag-zoom ng pangat mo yung picture na makuha mo? What matters is the main camera sensor. And the pictures I got here were so, so sharp. The colors were just so good. Although, medyo saturated, no? Kasi nga, real me yung kanyang processing, no? Uh, napansin ko, medyo enhanced talaga siya compared to the usual, usual flagship look. Uh, si iPhone, hindi masyado siya ganun ka-saturated. Si Vivo X80 Pro ay mas balanced yung colors dahil kay Zeiss algorithm. But yes, you're going to get flagship-like level of image quality here. Pati yung HDR, ang bonga. Sobrang... Balance out ng lighting. Usually kasi guys, kapag kapangit or basura yung HDR, sabog, sabog yung picture. Sobrang dark ng mga shadows, yung mga shadowy parts. Ito guys, ang ganda ng balancing. Panalo. Sobrang ganda rin ng bokeh dito. Yung bokeh effect, ang ganda ng background blur. Pati yung subject, sobrang sharp, sobrang detailed. The amount of details being retained here is just mind-blowing. Kaya sa mga nagsabi dyan, nagbabash dyan na magagaya ka pa, Poco X4 GT ka nalang. Ito yung wala dun eh. Sa iba kasi guys, sobrang important nung camera. And if you really want some really good cameras, you're going to pay for it. And by the way, meron na siyang OIS, something you don't find on mid-range phones. Guys, kapag meron kasing OIS or optical image stabilization yun yung sensor, mas consistent yung sharp images na makuha nyo. Kasi nga, kapag nag-picture tayo, medyo maugay yung ating kamay. Lalo na kapag in-stretch out natin a bit, ayan no, di ba, nanginig na, madalas nagiging blurred yung image natin. Kasi nga, wala stabilization. Not unless, dalawa yung pagpicture nyo, dalawang kamay, or nakapatong sa isang table, mas maganda yung stabilization. So, ito yung sample ng kanyang video, 1080p. And as you can see, okay, di ba yung white balance? How about my shirt? Maganda ba? Very detailed. How about my hair? How about my skin? How about my muscles? Ah, sarap, no? Sorry, may sawa na ako. Ultimo, pati ko niyang selfie camera ay sobrang detailed na aking mukha. Although medyo pinkish dito kasi meron siyang beautification right out of the box. Which is a good thing kasi hindi mo na ka mag-makeup. You're always fresh on the go. Advanced features. Meron pa siyang mga promo dito. Your ability to play around with other settings like ISO, aperture, 
autofocusing and the white balance. Meron siyang ganun. And meron din siyang raw mode. May histogram pa nga eh. Meron din siyang street mode, yung 24mm camera. And of course, the very reliable night mode. Meron din siyang ganun. And the video, up to 4K, 60 frames per second. Pang flagship talaga pala yung kanya processor. At ayan po, si Realme GT Neo 3. Finally, na-review ko na rin siya after my Naruto Edition unboxing. Now for some, this is going to be a big surprise. So kanya price ay 29,999 pesos for the 8 gigs of RAM. 256 gigs of internal storage. Sana lang meron silang 8128 in the first place para mas maraming options yung user. Pero meron silang 27999 mga ganun. Now here's the deal. This one has a better camera, a way better processor. Yung display niya sobrang panalo at mas mabilis yung charging, 80 watts. So kung titingin ka lang sa table side by side comparison, baka oo, hindi siya ganun kasulit to go for the Neo 3. Pag Neo 2 ka na lang or kung gamer ka lang talaga, X4 GT na lang ni Poco. But if you're looking into a flagship phone na hindi 50k, 60k ang presyo, this is going to be a great deal. Sana lang i-optimize pa nila for their games. Yun na naman. Actually, I'm excited to upgrade my setup and my phone reviews in my channel. Gusto ko na mag-review ng mga flagship ngayon iPhone versus Samsung versus Huawei versus Vivo X80 series, mga ganun. If you wanna see more flagship-like comparisons or reviews in my channel, mag subscribe by liking the bell icon so that you don't miss any of my great content. It's Vince, and you're watching Unboxed Ladies. Ooh.